Good day, YouTubers, and uh, welcome to yet another Land Rover Discovery 2 repair upgrade thing. Today, just uh, hopefully another quick job, like with the injector harness, I'm going to be fitting one of these little uh, little beauties. It's an, well, it's called an EGR blanking kit, but um, I mean technically it's it's really an EGR bypass kit. Uh, on the 300 TDIs, that's a blanking kit because you blank off both ends. But with this, it's running through. So this is a kit I bought on on eBay. They've sold hundreds of these. Uh, it's, I looked for a while. To find, I like to find stuff that's a good mixture of quality and price. Uh, this was around £25, I think it was. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description to the eBay seller I got it from. So it's stainless steel, welded, rounded end for clamping the pipe. With it, you also get a bag of fittings and gaskets. There's the gasket to go on that face there on the plate. And there's a gasket and a blanking plate which goes down here on the exhaust manifold. There's six bolts, four for the EGR bypass and two for the exhaust manifold uh, blank. Uh, you also get two rubber vacuum pipe um, stop end blanks caps for removing and blanking off two of the vacuum lines going to the solenoid and of course some instructions so I'll move, get on with that and um, we'll get the engine covers off and with this uh, job we also need to take the uh, fan and radiator cover off um, which is a shame really because it actually makes a very nice platform for when you're working on things to rest your arms on. Still, you can't have it all, can you? Uh, with this um, job, one thing that's worth doing before you do anything else is to... These two bolts here on the exhaust manifold, the, the socket head, Allen head uh, bolts, they have a tendency to sort of seize up. So it's a good idea to even the day before, give uh, the bolts a good dosing with WD-40 or similar. Uh, same with that one under there. And and then again, before you do anything else on the day you're doing the job, just give it a good old drenching. So while that's soaking, uh, we'll start by removing this pipe. I'm just taking it off the EGR valve itself. And do that, that Jubilee clip. Like so. Just let that hang right down there. And get the pipe off, which is probably going to be oh, easier said than done. That's a very stiff pipe as per usual should just lever carefully the end of the pipe just get it started here we go Problem is, with age, the rubber has oh, there we go, gone hard <coughs> or stiff at least. Ugh, right, that's off there, and then remove for now and place to one side. That's the theory. Oh, the uh, vacuum pipe. OK, 
<laughs> and then we need to get our little ratchet and they look like an eight mil to me short extension it takes years to get together a good uh, good selection of kit that's it reasonably loose and we take out these four bolts no washers I think that the lower two are probably going to be slightly more difficult to get to Sometimes things like this, you wish you had very long, thin fingers. Like the guitarist Steve Vai, he has unfathomably long fingers, and he reckons that he, when he was a child, he actually willed them to be longer so he could play amazing guitar. Yeah. Well, I can actually get to that one. Right, so I'll get these, uh, get these out, and, and then that'll be that. So the bolts are all out from around there. Um, no doubt as any past EGR fitting masters will, uh, will know, I think it's actually better to take the battery cover off as well. Gives you just a little bit more room down there. Now before we can pull this off, we need to remove these brackets here because this pipe is attached there. to keep these uh, little nuts and things so you never know when you need one in the future uh, I have tins full of old screws and nuts and washers and bolts and they always come in handy okay well that's that whole thing's loose there now. So we now come to the other bit. The one which is known to cause a lot of trouble. All right, to get this out, I'm having to be slightly, we'll show a bit of ingenuity. Um, I've got my socket and an extension, and usually I use this for hex head bolts which fits on the, on the socket but I don't have the bit for that size but I do have the bit from an impact driver so I've taken the chuck off my impact driver put the bit in it and put that on the end of the socket so here you goes I'm going to be very very careful I'm not a huge fan of hex head bolts for it's a nice tight fit but for things like this I'm not a huge fan of them because they can just round over for no reason whatsoever and be very careful oh wow <laughs> that's a relief when these things happen like that All right let's try the other one which might be a bit difficult to get to I'll try taking the extension off right. Are you going to go in there? See, if they'd done it so the bolt was there and there's another one right by there, then we'd all be a lot happier, wouldn't we? You know what I mean about designers not thinking about who's going to work on it. Right. Oh, lovely. 
Now that's either just because it's free or it's because I sprayed all that WD on there. spent my early days working on minis on the A-series engine. So you learn a lot of things from working in very enclosed areas. Minis were great for the A-series engine because you could get to the front and the top and the sides, but the back, if you need to get the, uh, <coughs> get the tappet covers off the back, well, my, let's say my, the skin on my knuckles is a lot thinner than it was before. Then. Right. Yeah, this one's, it'll be a lot easier to get to, obviously, when the blanking plate's on it. Ah. Come on, be nice, please. You do often find it, well, I find myself talking to my car sometimes, pleading with it, saying, come on, I've shown you nothing but love and attention and care since you've come to live with me. I'm sorting out all your little problems and issues. See? There you go. See, if you just talk to your car nicely, it can be a whole lot easier. Please come off. Please. There we go. Oh, look at that. See what you can do if you're nice? <laughs> right. So let's take this crud away then. Fortunately, the, um, see the engine has been breathing all this. Whew, stinks. Yeah, the engine's been breathing that. Now, with these exhaust gas recirculation valves are fine. In theory, they do re release, you know, reduce the emissions. But I could probably, the best analogy would be to describe it as someone who smokes 40 roll-ups a day for like 35 years. And I speak from experience here. Up until about three years ago, I was a 40-a-day roll-up man. Um, and believe me, after breathing that, you have five breaths of good, clean oxygen and one huge lungful of intoxicating cigarette smoke. Believe me, after 35 years of that, my performance suffered. So, it's the same with the engine. It's recycling around about 40% of its ex own exhaust gas, and it's breathing that in and reburning it. So, obviously, after a while, that affects performance. So, with that all off, now I need to remove the old gasket, which it would appear is very well stuck. So I could have probably just put instant gasket over it and reused it for the new one. But um, I've started now, so I'll finish. You have to be very careful when you're using a razor blade to do stuff like this because this is only an aluminium or an alloy casting. And, uh, well, you can end up digging huge holes in it. Mm -hmm. Mental note to oneself. Invest in some gasket remover. It's 
just do it. It's coming off this way if I just do it like this. Spray a bit of WD on it, that might help. I call it WD, but uh, it's not. It's from a local farm place and uh, it's only a pound of tin. Well, we're getting there. Um, I mean, it's tempting in these situations to uh, use a wire brush in a drill or something like that, but it would throw so much stuff all over the place and probably go into the uh, inlet manifold. Um, you have bits of gasket flying everywhere, but it's um it's nearly there. But ugh, in hindsight. The old gasket was extremely good, so I could have just left it and put uh, some instant gasket on it, but um, hindsight is a wonderful gift. Well, it's raining. First bit of rain we've had around here for about three weeks, so quite a record. So I've had a parcel from Paddocks with bits for the next job to do. And uh, let's take a look, see what's coming up. Um, when I had the rear wheels off the car when I did the chassis, uh, the, I'd look at the brake pads and they were down to about two, maybe three millimeters. So while I'm in, while I'm in the mood, we'll change the brake pads. Complete front and rear sets from Paddocks, Mintex, they're around about 14 pounds each, which you know, is just unbelievable. And I've always used Mintex pads. On all vehicles, I've had about six discoveries. I use them on the camper van. Uh, don't use them on my motorbikes. Mintex don't make them for my motorbike. Anyway, so uh, another job. The gear change, the lever, is very imprecise, very sort of sloppy. So the two guiding springs are fine, but I believe the plate might be broken or worn out. So I'll be replacing the plate. Um, that's an interesting job. That's four pound for that plate. And it's a beer, beer mac, beer mac, beer mac. But to do that, they'll take the center console off and and so on. So cheap part, lengthy job. But uh, yeah, we'll be doing that. Brake master cylinder. Now I know I'm gonna. I'm going to get some flak for this and I'm well aware of people's opinions on various Land Rover forums. Master cylinder and it's a brick part. I know, I know, but that was about £55, a genuine like Lockheed one was about 120 so I mean even if it lasts for 20,000 miles I can change it again and I still wouldn't have spent as much as a standard. So, I mean, I've used brick part stuff for years and to be honest, I've never really had any problems with it. So, brake master, uh, sorry, clutch master cylinder. Because I have the classic, like, right, two inches of travel on the pedal, just the spring return sort of pressure no hydraulic pressure there at all and then about an inch of clutch travel and it can be difficult to get it in gear sometimes combined with the sloppy gear change it, it can be interesting so that and just as a sheer precaution i'll be changing the slave cylinder as well might as well do them as a pair because it's very difficult to tell by the symptoms whether it's your clutch uh, master cylinder or the slave cylinder that's playing up and causing the problem. So they're about £14. Again, I think this is a brick part. Still. Um, so there you go. So those are pretty much the remaining jobs for now. Yeah. So brake pads, gear change plate clutch and clutch master and slave cylinders. Woohoo! Right. I believe 
it might have stopped raining. So let's go and have a look. Yes, indeed, it has stopped raining. So we now come to fitting the parts. I've given the um, exhaust uh, manifold joint a clean. Just a light scrape with the razor blade and a quick wire brush. And that's fine. So, first thing we need to do is fit the EGR blank bypass thing. And this is where you discover that your tub of, or your tube of instant gasket was instant gasketed. I think these things are really, no matter how tight you put the lid on, they do just go off. So I think they really are just like a one shot deal. So what I'm gonna do is stick a hole in it. There we go. Why mess about struggling? Life's too short for struggling. So let me take a good old dollop of that and I'm gonna spread it reasonably thickly like so around the thingy around the flange that's a great word that isn't it a lot of people find the word flange very funny myself included still this is a family show. A show, really. Um, right. Let's get the uh, and stick the gasket on there, like so. Instant gaskets holding it in place. And we'll take our EGR tube arrangement and stick a good trollop of that on there hmm. Quite a, another satisfying job it's a nice sort of knowing that it's all nicely on there Keep, my pe keep your piece of rag to hand. Keep wiping, wiping your hands. Right. Now we take our new bolts. This comes with nice uh, shiny bolts. Make sure it's not handed in any way. There's no sort of like lean to it. It does seem to lean very slightly downwards. So I'm going to face it with it leaning very slightly downwards as well. Get the pipe out of the way. Right, swap your hands. And then we go get the one out. Find the others lying about in the junk in your pocket. Like so stay there. the others in there. Apologies for my horse, his uh, mate's gone out on a ride and because he's uh, an old loopy Arab with severe abandonment issues, he thinks he's been left forever even though his mate goes out for a ride pretty much every day. You think he'd, after 25 years, he'd be used to it by now. I'm getting those all nicely in there. And the last one in the bottom. Tighten that one up. It's nice and shiny, isn't it? 
It's the shiniest thing in the entire engine bay. Apart from that new fuel regulator, which uh, I hadn't noticed before, but has been fitted um, by the by a previous owner, or the previous owner, not the one I bought it from. I hate to add because apart from covering up loads of bodges, they didn't really do anything to the vehicle. Okay. I'm going to just tighten these up. I'm sure there's a torque setting for it in the manual somewhere, but uh, I'm not really bothered about that because it's only a it's only a flange. I mean, I could double check it because of vibration and what have you, but I would say. A bit of twist and a bit more will be enough. So you're using just the uh, socket with the bit in it, just to take the slack up. Let's turn it and get it, and then tweak the Allen key. Or Alankies, as I used to call them. Have you got a quarter inch Alanky? Mm. This is this shiny bit of bling on here is about as close as I get to the old max power bling sort of circuit. I like stuff to be functional rather than just, it looks good. Stand, standard exhausts with a stainless steel tailpipe on it, that kind of thing. Oh, that's worth at least another five mile an hour, mate. Along, along with the uh, Seven mile an hour you get from your go faster stripes. <sighs> Offset by the drag coefficient of the fluffy dice. I would say that's pretty much on there. <sighs> right. We'll get the pipe back on. <laughs> he says. This, is, this could be interesting as well. <clears throat> oh, please, please fit. Remember to be polite to your car. Please fit. Mm. Need a screwdriver. A small, very small Phillips head screwdriver. This is the theory. <clears throat> Work your way round. Come on, please. Pretty please with the cherry on top. Come on. Oh, there you go. See, these things just need a little encouragement. Probably should have got some Vaseline on it, but... Uh... Bearing in mind that this area here would be taken up by the EGR valve and the pipe fits about here. So I just need to make sure really that I'm over the hump on the end of the bypass plate. I think I might be there. Get your clip. Then we need to put the blanking plate on the exhaust 
at the end of the exhaust manifold there. So for that, I shall be using some fire gum Holtz exhaust assembly paste. I'm going to give that a good I'm apply a nice big dollop of that to the thing. Sometimes it struggles to stick to metal, but sticks really well to your fingers and everything else. So I'll have that on there in a, so I'll have that down there in two shakes of a lamb's tail. A good coat, you know that. And then I'm going to stick a load on the face of the uh, of the gasket itself. Mm. Another little tip: if it's raining, close your uh, close your bonnet. Otherwise, you find everywhere soaking wet and nowhere to put stuff, especially paper gaskets. But we will be there. One more squidge. Hmm. Right. Ugh. Funky old stuff. Right. Mm. Getting the light now. Get the blank in plate. Fine wall. Fine wall. There you To, uh, it's hard to uh, find the thing when it's full of exhaust paste. Luckily, there's holes at the back where it's drilled right through and threaded, so I'm not I'm got to worry about any hydraulic pressure behind the bolt cracking the uh, exhaust manifold as it compresses the exhaust paste in the hole. More important with this because it's the exhaust manifold and subjected to extremes of heat more important to get the uh, bolts secured more firmly over the top. Right. Now for the final part. This is this was a non uh, water cooled EGR. Um, so there's only the one vacuum pipe with this. Um, and it's encased in this heat resistant plastic. Now it goes along and then it joins up with another one. Um, but this is the blue one that we're going to be removing um, and they're both inside the same plastic protective sleeve so I've taken off the tape at each end of it so I can get it out I could just cut it I could just cut the pipe and sort of pull it out but you never know you may have to refit it for whatever reason in the future so that's the pipe off and then making sure where are we? The fitting is clean. 
clean as a whistle. Get our new supplied sort of cap piece. Not the same like that. And slide it over there. It says in the instructions it'll be a tight fit. Simply because you want it to stay on there. You don't want any leaks. Because apparently with these, if you get an air leak, you can lose servo assistance on your brakes. Which wouldn't be very good, would it? Yeah, so that's out of there. That is one still in its protective case. Quick check of that, make sure that's all right. And looking good. Like so. Right, so that is on there. The EGR tube is fitted. The blanking plate is on the end of the exhaust manifold. So that can mean only one thing. It is time to start her up and feel the power. impressions are it's a lot quieter it's a lot smoother and there's not so much lag when you put your foot down so let's see what it's like when I give it some beans oh my god wow well I wasn't expecting that well success. So I'll uh, see you next time.